mentioned some of the fact that there is a lot of stories, a lot of um, films being made, books being made in relation to Republicans and criticizing that. You know, those, those books are being written by, and movies are being made by Republicans taking ownership of their own story. Is the problem here not with loyalism for not taking ownership of its own story and telling its own story? So rather than criticize other filmmakers, should you not be maybe motivating people to come out and tell their own story? Well, you and I have had this argument quite a few times, and the issue, the issue I take from it, Alison, is not that the public is, are trying to do their history and tell their own stories. The issue I take with it is that the media are perpetuating these as some kind of independent uh, reports and videos, uh, and they're not independent. They're not independent. They're propaganda, and the media, and, and, and you know, you and I have argued about it in the past. It's not reflected whenever the media cover these. Uh, stories, you know, for, for, for example, the Glenan Gang film was covered in the Irish news and was covered in, in other newspapers, and nowhere within the Glenan Gang film did anybody mention the fact that one of the contributors to it has an OTR letter for killing a kid. You know, so what I'm saying is, if the publicans want to uh, make documentaries, they want to make films about their past, that's fine. But my issue, I, my issue is with the mainstream and with civic society who hold these up as if these are independent films. It's about as independent as me making a film about loyalism. It's not independent at all. You know, it, it, it's a nonsense. If somebody came to me and says, uh, Jimmy Gleason's going to make a film uh, about his view on the Troubles, do you, think, do you think anybody in the media would report that and say, well, this is a fantastic, independent, well-thought-out film? No, they would say, this is absolutely biased from his point of view. Why is it, why is it one rule for loyalists and one, one for publicists? And just let me make a final point. And again, this, this, the Lock and Island case, again, uh, and look, what happened to the people in Lock and Island was wrong. No, no, nobody's going to seek to justify that. I think that the UDF and the UDA and the Left Hand Commando themselves in 1994 expressed abject and true divorce to all innocent victims of the trouble. So let's get that out of the way. But at the point, in relation to the Lock and Island here, uh, they had a protest outside calling for truth, truth, uh, truth and justice. Now, I counted at least six convicted IRA terrorists standing holding banners calling for truth and justice. I didn't read about that in the media. First of all, I would say that the OTR letters you keep saying, nobody knows. I know some of the people who have those OTR letters but they've identified themselves, or they've been involved in court cases, and that's, that's just speculation. The issue is this. Uh, lethal Allies, the Glenan Guy film, the Lock and Island film, named people who were not convicted, people who had not have the opportunity to have due process, and while those people were guilty or not, they're entitled to due process like everybody else. So if it's not okay to name the OTRs, why is it okay to name policemen, why is it okay to name soldiers, and why is it okay to name loyalists?